Hey there, on Chet Chat today, we're profiling a career that's been consistently ranked as one of the top 10 jobs around the world that combines respect, technology, aesthetics, creativity, and revenue in adequate measure. And now with an aging population around the world is also one of the fastest growing careers out there. So we have with us on the show today, Dr. Chitran Thakur who is a dental implantologist and a member of several international conferences on implantology. So Dr. Chitran, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for taking out the time to be here. We've got you right in the middle of your clinic. It's a pleasure. Tell us about this field. It's garnering so much interest. And what brought you here? And Tell us a little bit about the pluses and minuses. of. For me, uh, the inception of dentistry started way back in my seventh grade. Uh, at my visit to my dental uncle and got some fillings done and I was fascinated as a boy to see the air turbines working, the drills going into the tooth and it was like a wonderful experience actually, contrary to what most people would believe. <laughs> and uh, post my board exams, uh, once there was no CET then luckily, <laughs> so we got, I got my good marks and I got into my dental school and here I am. Enjoying my dentistry. With so many years of good experience. So tell yes. us for people watching, students watching the show and thinking, is this a field that I should pursue or not? So what would you like to say to them? Uh, the pros, I will, if I want to put them, the best would be that it's a perfect concoction of art, science and technology. Yes. Okay, so it always keeps you interested. There's always something new coming up and your creativity never dies. Right. And uh, the best part, there are no emergencies apart from some uh, fields of dentistry yeah and uh, eventually you can be a boss of your own have your own setup right. you don't have to be on a fixed date on a desk job of course sure and it, it's remunerative it's, it's lifelong it's lifelong uh, yes there's always a sense of fulfillment once you do something uh, nice for the patient and plus you meet so many people of course so i like doing that Cons for me, very difficult to point out, <laughs> but uh, for somebody you can always say the initial cost that goes into setting up a dental practice sure. can be considered a deterrent because uh, you need to have a premises, you need to have equipment, you need right. to upkeep those equipment as per the technology demands and of course the staff and salary and everything which goes about it. The other uh, con, if at all, again would be the number of years. If you're not sure what you want to do as a, to begin with, whether I should pursue dentistry, pursue, pursue engineering, biotech or something like that, the number of years that you need to put in to study and uh, eventually get back and become a bread earner for your family. Right. Whereas an engineer would by that time probably be looking for a second or third job for himself. <laughs> so it okay. does uh, matter. Okay, so that's, that's a fairly balanced uh, assessment of, of both ends. But look, talking about number of years, yeah. so the BDS or the Bachelor of uh, Dental Surgery, yeah. as it's called, is a four-year program? Yeah, it's a four-year program uh, in our country and then there is a one year of internship that you have to do from the college that you are studying. Of course, there is a student exchange program where you can exchange for your externship. Okay. and. Uh, if you intend to pursue the post-graduation that is the MDS, then there is an additional three years or two years based on few subjects. Okay, so four plus one five mandatory. And plus uh, three. Masters is optional but preferable. That yeah. could be two or three. Two or three. And it could be done back to back. Right? It can be done back to back. Some do take a sabbatical because there is an entrance test which is, which is involved. So Chitrang, tell me there are high school students looking at the show and thinking they want to pursue dentistry going forward. So right. What subjects should they be taking in their 11th and 12th? Uh, very good question. Uh, the most important subjects which generally revolve around uh, medical or health sciences would be the physics, biology and chemistry. Okay. So what we call PCB in right. uh, short and for the engineering counterparts is PCM. Right. Now with the advent of CET, uh, the importance of PCB 12th has definitely gone down. So, uh, securing 50% is good enough. Okay. But uh, you need the same subject, the same uh, knowledge base to perform much, much better at the CET level. You know, format of 200 mark question paper where 50 is awarded to physics, 50 to chemistry and biology takes the larger share of 100 marks. Okay. Okay. So if you have a good score of at least uh, 500 and in that range, then you can get into good government schools or colleges of your choice and in your area. And this is the same entrance exam for medical? 
Yes, it's the same even for other paramedical subjects, in fact, for physiotherapy, for pharmacy. So, there is this talk about changing that entire format into a new format entrance Yes, there is, and uh, something called NEAT is what is going to be introduced. There is uh, some debate between the education department and the court and the colleges. Probably will give uh, a common platform for everybody to, you know, compete. Looking at the four-year BDS program, uh, you went to a private medical college, right. but there's this constant debate about government medical colleges, private medical colleges. What's your recommendation? Government institutions have a long history. They always have uh, good volumes of practice because eventually, as a doctor, you need to connect with most patients and see more uh, range right. of cases, right. you know. But at the same time, the private institutions are very well uh, made, they are, the infrastructure is really nice, they have sometimes very good faculty. Sure, so take us through that four year program, how is it structured broadly? Uh, the first two years are more of the uh, study oriented and practical uh, that we have, we have the dissections, we, want, we study the basics of the human body, the pathologies and the microbiology and all those kind of things and a dental subject is introduced every year. Unlike the third and the final year, which is more clinical, where we are mostly around our dental subjects, uh, we attend clinics, we look at patients, we shadow our teachers, and eventually, once you are uh, through your final BDS exams, you do your internship in the same uh, departments for the year ahead. Now, looking at postgraduate options, there are several options I'm gathering after you do your BDS. Oh, yeah. So, could you tell us about some of them? We have eight uh, faculties, eight fields or subjects of your choice, uh, nine in fact, now with community dentistry and uh, six of which are more clinical and practice oriented, three are more into the academic and the research oriented. They are into community dentistry, then the oral pathology where we find a particular kind of disease and oral radiology and diagnosis again which is more of x-ray and coming to a diagnosis. Vis-a-vis -vis all these subjects that we have which would be either being a specialist into a root canal that is a conservative dentistry or an oral surgeon or an orthodontist for a braces. So after they've done their BDS, they've done the one year of internship. Now assume there's a student that wants to do a post-graduation in India. Right. Is there an entrance examination again at that point? Yes, there is an All India entrance exam and some again the deemed universities can have their own entrance exams. Okay. So again the, uh, the results of those common entrance tests decide which subject you, are, you can select. Why we say you have to again get very good ranks because the number of postgrad seats are very very few. Right. Like a government college would have only three or four seats for a particular postgrad subject. Mm. So unless you are in the top four and you want to be a surgeon then it's going to be that much more competitive to oh. be there. So we are talking top 500 coming down to top 3 Maybe 100, four. yeah. May, within the 100 to get uh, a postgrad choice, choice yeah. across India. Yeah. Now, if there is a student that probably doesn't make that 3, 4, 5 number, uh, what are the options open to him? Uh, luckily, in the today's world, we have enough uh, continuing education. We have uh, good short courses of diploma, which are a year or two, uh, depending upon what subject you are choosing. You can either pursue them in India with collaborations of uh, universities like in US or in uh, uh, European countries or you can even go there and do your study, a diploma course, study over there okay. and come back and practice in India. You are not entitled to practice over there but yes, it does help you enhance your skill set and your knowledge base. So Chitrang, if there is a student wondering should I pursue my entire dental education in India or should I look at opportunities abroad in the US, Europe, UK right. etc. What would you advise to them? Uh, see, I uh, model that question, the answer to that question as three F's, the important F's. Okay, The, the first F is family. Right. So if you have a family, strong family hold over here and you like to continue to stay connected with them, then dentistry over here makes more sense. Sure. And the second is finance. Yes, if the finances if, uh, are uh, good, then definitely pursuing abroad is always a dream for everybody because they are a little ahead in terms of uh, technology and advancements. And the final is future. If you can foresee yourself well where you would be eventually at the end of say 5 years or 10 years of your practice and you look to settle abroad, then it's more uh, logical to be over there to begin with. So we spoke about the specialization op options at the post-graduation level. Right. Some you said were clinical, some were non-clinical, some were research oriented etc. Now tell us if you were to chalk somebody through or take somebody through 
the future right. in each one of these areas and how would you guide them? The general uh, lifespan of people which is increasing mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. with all the advent of medicine so naturally we need the teeth to run that long as well right. and we have various technological advancements like 3D shaped teeth, uh, we have implants which uh, are guided through computer. In terms of academics, uh, we have community dentistry which is academics come research. Though in India we don't have the forensic odontology too much but community dentistry, uh, the research which goes, the statistics that we, uh, they pull up really helps uh, companies like Colgate, Laxo, the pharma guys. And forensic odontology abroad has a huge scope. Uh, there is a whole, uh, almost a continuous uh, demand for almost all criminal cases. In India, it's coming up and I think so it's a prospective uh, field where you know one can look and carve a niche for himself or herself. And other than that, on the academic side, where can people see themselves in future? There is a stem cell which is coming up. Mm -hmm. And stem cell has a good scope in dentistry because currently we are using the milk teeth or the primary teeth that we call uh, officially to harvest stem cells for uh, you know the stem cell research as well as the stem cell banking. Okay, so looking forward they can have their own practice, they can get into research, they can work for pharmaceutical companies or toothpaste manufacturing companies like you yeah, said. Yeah, so either ways. Or then they could look at themselves as professors or maybe part yes. of a large hospital. Yes, or they could be even private tutors or mentors where if you are good uh, at uh, teaching but don't want to get uh, tied up with an institution, you can run your own courses. Fantastic, so there's lots for them to do. There is, there is a huge scope, there is a huge scope. So Chitrang, in dentistry, once you're in a private practice, you know, one of the challenges is that we are pretty much on our own, not only in terms of the business but in terms of our own learning as well. Yeah. So on a continuous basis with new technologies now uh, coming in, how do you keep yourself updated? With so many forums, uh, so many uh, social groups on you know, social media, it's not that difficult if you are keen on getting updated. There are a lot of webinars uh, by the best in the world. There are courses which you can do. You can go abroad and you know just do a four day, five day uh, course to enhance a particular skill set that you would want to. There's enough to learn, read. Uh, imbibe, uh, to mention a few, there are Journal of Implant uh, Dentistry, GIACD, there are uh, internet forums called Compedium, they have enough uh, information which includes research of products existing as well as products that would be launched in near future. Yeah, and I'm sure all the conferences that you're part of that you attend internet. Yes, we have quite a few of them, in fact sometimes if you are uh, too eager then you have to really tick mark how many I can attend in a year, calendar year. So now coming to the private practice and a lot of people are in that field, uh, what is your advice to people wanting to set up their own practice? How is the best way to run that? Uh, I remember myself coming out of dental school and uh, looking at uh, what should I do. I was uh, very eager to start my practice but uh, luckily I had a very good mentor for myself and it helped me a lot. So I would recommend the same, find a mentor, shadow the teacher and learn learn the basic skill set of communication because once you come into private practice it's a personal one-to-one uh, -one conversations how to address a problem how to lay down the anxiety that a patient carries into your clinic that's why i would say not jump into it immediately uh, assess maybe follow a couple of uh, you know dentists shadow them see how they are running their practice or sometimes there are these larger setups where four or five dentists get together and there's like a bigger clinic that gets set up. Do we end up learning? Yes, we, are called, we call them associate practice. Okay. Uh, what that, that does is that you have various fields. Uh, you have masters in each field uh, giving their services. So, you know, you mentioned as a kid you walked into a dental clinic and you liked it so much that you got inspired to pursue it. Yes. I don't know how many kids and how many adults are like you. Most of them are like me. They don't want to be in the dentist's room. <laughs> I would agree with you entirely because uh, practicing the last 16 odd years or so and I always uh, have that as a primary uh, issue to deal with on a daily basis. It's the fear or the phobia of the drill, of the sound, of the pain most importantly that Whatever you do, doc, ye to dukhne wala hai. That's an area where a dentist has to be really good at, you know, calm the nerves, uh, ease their uh, pain, educate them, what is important, what are we going to do, why it is important, what will happen if you don't go through it. But I would at the same time uh, just add a little bit that dentistry has changed and evolved drastically. Uh, it's no longer the painful dentistry that everybody perceives about, you know, 
it's very very peaceful we do uh, most of the procedures where patients walk in and out and they are back to their work either the same day or the next day but dentistry is uh, there as a fear for most of the people yeah probably yeah. just like the number one job in the world the number one fear in the world yeah <laughs> If you have uh, 10 people standing away, I think so nine will surely say that I don't want to be sitting in the dental chair I'll behind us. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I wish you all the luck for this field that you're doing wonderful work with people and helping them. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being with It us. It was our pleasure. Thank you so much. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com/chatchat101. Follow my Twitter handle chatchat101 or at Instagram chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below and if you'd like me to feature any particular college please let me know thank you